Live Canvas gives you the ability to customize your own header. While the default behavior leaves the default themes header in place, you can change this behavior, handling the header inside of Live Canvas, opening up the opportunity for more customization, easier code editing, and much more. Let's have a look at this in today's video. To give you a quick rundown of what we'll be doing, we'll be changing up the header a little bit like this. We'll have different stylings that we'll apply, as well as different types of CSS that you might not have to do manually because we've got the customization for that. On top of that, if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit like and subscribe and let's just jump straight into it. Now, if you're running PicoStrap, our default theme, let's have a look at some of the customizations you can already make to the header without actually changing even any behavior. This is really useful and we always recommend if you're trying to build a theme from scratch to try our PicoStrap theme because it has all the base blocks that you need to create your own website with all the benefits of Live Canvas as well. So let's start by simply having a look at how we can customize the nav bar inside of PicoStrap without actually configuring any advanced settings. Let's head over to appearance and to customize. When we head here, we'll get a number of different options and we wanna select the main navigation bar. Here, we're going to get a number of settings we can configure. The first one is the nav bar expansion. This essentially means that the nav bar will collapse at different viewports. Right now, the default is MD, and this is a good viewport to leave it on. But for example, if you wanted to collapse earlier, you could expand it at the XL and upper, and you can see that we've got our essential hamburger menu here on the top right, meaning that the menu has collapsed. This is a good setting to use based on how many items you might have in your menu, and you might want to adapt it. The next one is the nav bar position, which, as you assume, is essentially where the nav bar is located. Normally it's located at the top, but if we scroll down, it disappears. The other thing we can do is actually have it as a fixed position. So that way, as we scroll through the page, it remains at the top. The other option, of course, is to put it at the very bottom. This depends on the kind of site you're making, but if that works with the site you need, then that might work for you. Finally, we might want to have no nav bar in case you have a custom setting on, but this is just for your preference. I'm going to leave it at the standard static top for the time being. Finally, we've got the navbar background color. Right now I've got it on dark, but you can select to have it whatever you want. For example, you might want to have it the primary color of the website, which would be blue. And you could also have it as a secondary, which might be the gray. This really depends on you, and you can set your own colors for this later as well. The other thing is the links and text themselves. Right now they're on a dark background, but for example, if they were on a light background, we could change that up so you can see the black text there. That doesn't work very well in this example, but we can have a transparent background for the nav bar and that would look a lot better. Or you can select a default, which makes it much easier and it's just automatically selected for you with the default color. Another useful thing about a header is a thing called a top bar, where you sometimes have a phone number or email or opening hours. Let's have a look at how to add that in right now. We'll go back from the main navigation bar customizer and we'll scroll down a little bit here to the optional toolbar. This optional toolbar allows us to enable the top bar. When we select it to enable it, we immediately see that it's here at the very top. We've got the irregular information, things like call us or maybe a contact number or maybe even an email or an address. It's really useful, but you can customize what you see up there just in this section here below. This way you can put in whatever you need in there. You can also customize the background color. For example, if you wanted to stand it out with maybe a darker color so it's consistent with, for example, the actual navigation and menu, you can do that too. We'll also update the font so that it has a light color, for example, or you could even have it as a primary color just so that it has a little bit of contrast while still blending into that bar. I'm going to disable it for the time being, and we can have a look at this a little bit later on, but it hopefully gives you an idea of how you can quickly have that top bar implemented. Now, let's explore some of the alternative, but more complicated and powerful things we can do. This will make a lot more sense once we dig a little bit deeper into the customization, literally doing whatever you want to do inside of your header. So let's enable this header handler by jumping into the backend here for Live Canvas and selecting to tick this box over here. 
which essentially handles the header for us inside of Live Canvas. We'll hit the tick button and we'll hit save on that and that'll enable it, also prompting this button here to launch the header editor. By the way, you can also handle the footer. It works fundamentally the same way and we won't get into it just now, but once you learn how to handle the header itself, those same principles will apply. So now that we've enabled this option, let's actually jump into the Live Canvas homepage to see what's changed and how the header looks now. You can see that it is a little bit different. We no longer have the header we had before on the dark background. We actually have one on a light background, but it has a few more elements here. We've got our brand name and a logo. We've got our menu and a contact us. And this all now exists within Live Canvas to be managed and we'll have a look at that next. So you might be thinking what's happening under the hood. Let's actually have a look. We'll head back to the Live Canvas section and we'll head down here to Live Canvas and to Template Partials. Then we'll hover over Header and here we've got Edit with Live Canvas. Selecting this will allow us to edit the header inside of the Live Canvas editor, giving us all the tools and functionality we're used to. But Template Partials also gives you the option to create your own partials, part of the website which you can put in here and edit at any point in time. And then you can print those out via shortcodes or PHP code, which is provided whenever you actually edit them directly and you get to see the shortcode or the PHP code required to print them out. All right, let's backtrack. There's two ways you can now edit this header. You can hover over here, like I said earlier, and edit with Live Canvas. Alternatively, you can go here to the home section under Live Canvas. You can scroll down and launch the header editor. Both of these take you to the same place where you get to see the header as a component to edit inside of Live Canvas and nothing else. So you can focus on this one section. So let's take a look at different ways we can edit this header. The first thing we can do is hover over this section and delete it. And what we're gonna do is add our own custom header. There's a few pre-made ones that help you get going. We've got this one here with a header and a search form. If we close this one off and have a look at it, we can see that we've got our logo, our brand name, our menu, as well as a search form here at the top right, which is useful. We can delete this one and let's have a look at another one. We've got one here with a header with a, essentially a gradient and a WhatsApp CTA link. So this looks more or less like this. We can see that it's more of a darker version with the white text here, but also very useful and looks pretty good. Let's have a look at another one. We've got here one which is just a header with a basic CTA link. This can be anything you want. You can select this button and label it saying maybe something like hello world and let's see if that updates and let's close this section off and we can see our button here has automatically updated so you get live previews of everything you're doing. Let's have a look at the very last one here. And this one here is a default header. So if you wanna start from scratch, this is a useful one, which is what we began with. For now, the one that I like the most is actually the one with a gradient. So I'm gonna switch that one here and make sure that I remove the original one that I had and we'll select to save those changes. I wanna have a look at what the website now looks like with this header in place. So I'm going to open up a new page and have a look at what this header looks like with content inside. And we can see that it's applied. If we zoom in, we can see that the responsive design takes effect like we would expect, as well as our little WhatsApp link here at the top right. All right, let's jump back into our live canvas editor for the header. The next thing we're gonna do is have a look at the code. Here you have a section button. And one cool thing that you can do is right click on it to view the code. So let's do that right now. We can see that the code applies here and we get all our bootstrap code that we're used to. We get a number of things that we might normally see like this container and we can change this code. And if you know how to do that, you can apply different effects depending on what you're after. For example, we've got a container here, which makes it a fixed width. We could apply container dash fluid and this applies automatically, creating a full width navigation here for our header. And what we can do next is actually hover over the container and select to edit the properties inside of Live Canvas. This makes it much easier. So for example, if you wanted to change these things and you don't want to edit the manual code, you can just edit them right in here. And this puts it back to a container. So if we have a look at this section code now, we can see that's back to a container. And this is all using the bootstrap code we're familiar with. Let's take this to another level by editing the section and its properties and having a look at how this works. We've got a number of properties here and right now I wanna edit the spacing. I wanna apply some padding to this section for the header to essentially allow it to float off the page a little bit. So what I'm going to do is apply four units of padding from all sides, top, bottom, left, and right. And now when we have a look at it, we can see that it's floating off a little bit. We could add maybe a background color or something else here, but it gives you an idea of how you can edit this section. 
If you wanted to have a look at the HTML code, you can go up one level and you can see the padding that we've applied using bootstrap classes to this section. If for example, you wanted to apply the padding inside the section itself, we could do that too. So actually let's remove all this padding that we've applied. So rather than having it float, let's actually make this header a lot bigger. We'll edit the properties here and let's open up the spacing here for the actual container itself. Let's add four units and what this will do is make it look like the actual header itself is a little bit bigger, giving it a lot more room to breathe and white space, which is sometimes good for good UI. Of course, at any time, you can open up the code itself and edit these things manually using your own code or even just the bootstrap code that you're used to, such as reducing this from four units of padding to two units of padding. If you prefer to work inside of the editor panel, you can select it to edit the properties and scroll down here to the HTML attributes, where all of these also are visible and editable in case you wanted to make any changes. For now, I'm going to leave them as two units of padding for all sides. Next, let's make sure that our menu works in terms of responsive design. We have all the viewports that you're used to for Bootstrap here for you to preview immediately. You can have a look at the 100% width or you can actually select different viewports such as extra extra large, large, medium, small and extra small for mobile to make sure that the menu is working as you intended. Now let's add some animation to this header. Let's select to edit the properties for the section and let's scroll down here to animation. We've got different animation types and what we're going to do is maybe add a slide down animation. One of the things you'll need is the AOS library enabled inside of the live canvas backend settings. So let's do that now. What I'm going to do is select OK here and we're going to go to our live canvas settings and we're going to make sure that we add animations, which is just this first option over here. We're going to select to save this and then we're going to select to save this page here as well. Then we're going to reload and that should apply and we should be able to now create animations for our section without any issue. I'm going to select the edit properties here and just make sure that the slide down animation exists, which it does. Next, we can actually open up a copy of the page and we can see that now when we load into the page, we've got our header sliding down and it's a nice animation just to make the page seem more a little bit alive. Now let's take a look at some of the short codes being implied inside of this header so that you understand how they work. The very first one is lc underscore home underscore URL, which is being applied inside of this A-link. This is essentially printing out the home page so that we can link it to the logo image. This is the default behavior people expect when they click on the logo. The second one here is for the navigation itself. We've got lc underscore nav underscore menu, and this is essentially printing out the menu, the primary menu from WordPress like a normal nav walker. And if you wanted to show a different menu, such as the secondary menu, you can actually edit this theme underscore location variable and change this to secondary, which would apply immediately. But right now we don't have one, so I'm just going to leave it as primary. There's lots of other changes we can make to the menu, such as, for example, maybe having this centered. Right now, we can see that the menu itself is just on the left-hand side. We can change this code here on the bottom left, which is essentially a class me-odo, and change this to mx-odo. This will make sure that the menu is odo margin from the left and the right-hand side. Let's apply this change and select save and refresh, just to see that these changes have applied. And when we do, we'll see that the menu is no longer off to the left aligned, but now it's aligned from the center, margin from the left and the right hand side. This is an example of how you can edit the code to essentially do whatever you want inside of the menu. Let's take this a step further, editing some more code. For example, you might not want the menu to collapse so early, or you might want it to collapse immediately. We could remove this navbar dash expand dash x um, LG class here. And when we do, we can see that the navbar immediately collapses and is immediately visible with the hamburger menu. Of course, if we wanted to expand it just at a earlier viewport, we could pass in say MD for example, and this means that it wouldn't collapse until we go below that MD viewport down to a mobile viewport. This is a few examples of how you can edit the responsive design of the menu using bootstrap classes or your own classes as well. Now let's have a look at how we can edit the logo as well as the text over here. It's quite simple. You can simply type in anything you want, such as a brand or a name or text. It's simply editable like you would normally in live canvas. You can also apply styling to it, such as making bold or italics or other classes under the uh, classes section. The other thing you can do is edit the logo itself. You can select the logo and you get a bunch of tools here that you can use to update it however you want. Essentially, you can use a URL here, which is external, or you can upload a local image as well. 
You can use anything from PNGs to SVGs and it'll adapt accordingly. What I'm going to use is this large live canvas logo here and I'm going to select to maybe use about 25% of the size and it fits in nicely here. But of course, if you don't want to do that, if you want to manually set that, you can do that too. You can select it to have a look at the HTML. You can have a look at the width and the height being applied. Here, you've got a height of 30 and a width of 30. I'm going to remove the height and I'm going to set the width to maybe something like 150 pixels. And here we can see that it's fitting in nicely. Let's close this off. And now let's also select the actual logo itself and add a little bit of margin between our text and the logo because right now they're a little bit too close together. I'm going to add four units of margin here to the right and that seems to fit in nicely. And finally, if you no longer wanted a gradient or you wanted something different, maybe a light theme, you could remove this background gradient, which we've applied as a style here. And right now this nav bar is also set as a dark mode. So let's actually set this to nav bar dash light and we can see that all our branding and styling has adapted accordingly. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There is going to be a lot more videos coming out about Live Canvas and how to customize it and create your own website with ease. So stay tuned to those. Otherwise, if you haven't already, hit like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.